Tommy's gonna taste the gin so that you don't have to Let you save your money, yeah, that's what Tommy wants Minimal dilution, cause we wanna taste the gins But if the gins are bad, then we will throw them in the bin Now let's head it over to Tommy, who is gonna taste? He's gonna get on rowdy and shout up the place Hello and welcome back to Tommy Tastes, the channel where I taste the gin so that you don't have to. But how do we like it? How do we like it? Neat, neat, neat. How are we gonna taste it? How are we gonna taste it? Neat, neat, neat. Enough of that. Gin time. <laughs> Move over, coffee. This is a job for gin. I thought I'd go with a slightly different reveal on this week's gin, so I'm going to do an unboxing if that's all okay. As you can see, this week's gin has a lovely leather velvet sheath which I'm stroking there. And if I go to take off the sheath, what you'll notice is this odd golden cylinder here. Now, the sheath is a little difficult to force off and uh, then didn't like to pop out on itself there, but uh, don't mind that. But as you can see, the glass cylindrical case that it's in is rather beautiful and has these very ornate kind of hinges on there. So if I go to open up the hinge there with my perfectly manicured hand, what you'll see inside, whoa, look at that. That's some Ferdinand Zars gin in there. But is it any Ferdinand Zars? No, this is the gold cap edition. Ooh, fancy. Look at that, look at the way it catches the light in that beautiful 50cl bottle. Now, it's got a glass topper here, uh, as you can see. It did originally have a cork in there, but uh, it's been ravaged by my wife, who's assuring me that this is of fantastic quality. This is my first time tasting it. Also comes with a little padlock there that you can see, bit gimmicky, and then a piece of paper documenting all of the interesting things about the gin, which I tore. So what do we know about the Ferdinand Zar Dry Gin? Well, it's made by the Avidus Distillery, and it takes its name from Ferdinand Geltz, who was one of the founders of the Mosul VDP, bleh, boring wine stuff, don't need to know about it. All you need to know is that this gin comes from the Mosul Valley, in Germany. Main selling features of this wine is that it is infused with some Riesling from the Mosul Valley. Riesling, for those of you who don't know or don't really care about wine, Riesling is a white grape and Germany's flagship white grape. It's a high acid, high aromatic, very intense floral kind of grape. Bit boring, don't need to go into that. What you need to know though is that some of the final product is infused with that Riesling. Things that we do know about this is that it's taking over 30 botanicals. The standard comes with 30 botanicals. Odd things that include things like rose hip, hop blossom, almond shell, uh, bleh. That's a lot of botanicals, 30. This one has even more botanical. So taking those original 30 and we're adding things like dried Riesling grape, Mirabelle plums, whatever they are, plums I'm guessing, pear, cranberry and sage. All of these botanicals are organic and locally sourced. This is a once a year distillation and really small batch, so incredibly rare. In that sense, what we are working with here is an ultra premium product. Now, ultra premium is a super dirty word. I'm sure many of you have had ultra premium gins before and gone, what the f was that all about? That was, that was nonsense. Why, why haven't I got a Gordon's in front of me now? This stuff is absolute sh some ultra premium gins do genuinely live up to their name. So the question is, is Ferdinand Zar gold cap dry gin a real ultra premium product that is worthy of ultra premium status? Going back to the original Ferdinand Zar dry gin, this is a 44% gin that is vapor infused. So not only are the botanicals all being steeped in their grain spirit for about 24 hours, what they're then doing is putting different chambers within the column of the still, all with botanicals on there, so that as you're boiling the spirit, you're rising through those chambers and getting loads of those lovely aromatics. And what that really is there to do is take out more of the high-end aromatics that maybe you don't get when you're just doing a normal kind of boiling with the botanicals in the spirit. 
Other distilleries that are very famous for doing this include things like Bombay Sapphire. What up distillation dorks, just Tommy Button in here to tell you that there's more information on vapour infusion within distillation on a link in the description of this video. Hope you enjoy, exam next week. This distills in exactly the same way as that original Ferdinand Tsar. The difference is when they're diluting that spirit down, what they're getting here instead of 44% is 49%, which is crazy high in terms of ABV and a real spirit lover's dream. However, it's not even the highest alcohol one that they do. The highest is a cask strength that comes in around 66%. Fucking crazy, right? One of the differences between this and the original Ferdinand Tsar dry gin is also the Riesling that they're infusing with. With the original, I think they take kind of a standard incarnation of their Riesling and infuse it with that. This one is a super rare, super upmarket Riesling that they're using. So they take an Auschleser gold capsule, hence the name gold cap with this. So Auschleser, not to bore you too much, is a measure of the sugar ripeness that you get in a grape. Uh, it basically means kind of selected harvest in German and means that it's the grapes that are riper and there to give kind of a better quality of wine, more intense expression. However, on the back of the bottle, it actually lists the type of wine that went into this. And it was a 1999 Auschleser gold capsule. Gold capsule being the highest kind of mark of a, a winery's wine, and one that's generally speaking a lot more intense. But 1999, that's over a 20 year old wine that they're infusing with this. So you should expect to see real developed flavors, maybe some dried fruit, but real florality, maybe even, wine wanker term, alert, petrol in this gin. For anyone who thinks that I might be talking out of my ass right now, I highly recommend that you watch the film Som. If you think I'm bad, see what some of the pricks in this film are really like. Other wine wanker terms will include tennis balls and garden hose. Should be really, really interesting. I'm so excited to taste this, so let's crack on and taste. I didn't realise that Oz Clark had taken over this channel. Jesus! There's no discoloration from the wine or anything. We've got a completely clear colourless liquid in the glass. Mm -hmm, getting there nice and deep like boy. First thing to note is just how intense this gin is. I'm really getting a lot of alcohol when I first get in there and that's not surprising with 49%. If I wasn't getting alcohol, I would be seriously questioning whether my nose is working. But it doesn't smell like a nasty spirit or anything like that. It smells warm, but it also smells floral and fragrant. I'm not smelling like the kind of smell you get of a tramp as you go past, put it that way. It is floral, it's quite fruity. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of that pear on there as well. And it's certainly got kind of sage aromatic going on. There's a bit of woodiness, there's a bit of herbaceousness, but it's really quite hard to get a lot of these because it's so incredibly intense and the alcohol is burning my nose. Goodbye, my nose. Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. You have been the one for me. So let's have a taste, see if any of that changes. Oh, you love it, don't you? Yeah, gobble it all up. All right, Dan. Okay, so this is more weighty than a lot of vapor-infused gins that I've had in the past. And I think that's possibly in part just due to the sheer number of botanicals that go into this. When you're talking 30 plus botanicals, if you didn't have something that was a bit weighty, I would be fucking shocked by that. There is a slight oiliness to it, and I think that could be in part due to the Riesling that's infused in here. And there's a definite really nice salinity that um, gives you quite a long finish, like you'd expect from a wine of such caliber. But I think this gin is really gonna be woken up by a splash of ice or a splash of water in there, because right now it feels very hard and not easy to work through. The ice cube has landed. We've got a clear gin, so obviously we're working with something nice and chill filtered here. Oh yeah, I made a real volcano. The alcohol has really been toned down and that's a blessing. Now I'm getting much more pear, much more florality, very saline, uh, possibly like a little bit of damson in there. There's certainly like a kind of fruitiness, but the fruit feels really fresh, not like candied or dried or anything like that. Very interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see what it's like when I put a little water in there. I've diluted with just a splash of water. Stay tuned for next week where we'll be making the perfect cheeky Vimto. Mm. 
So now I feel like the aged wine is really coming into this. I'm getting much more of a kind of raisin-like note that you'd expect with a slightly older version of Riesling. I feel like some of the botanicals I had have truly been lost now. I don't feel the sage quite so much. I think the damson is still there, but really I think it feels a little more generic. And with something that's 49%, I'm expecting that to really cut through. I literally diluted this with a splash of water, not even one to one, talking more like one to 0.5. And I feel like it's lost most of what was interesting about it. And I'm getting a bit of a generic spirit-like aroma now, and that's not what I wanted. Make it rain, girl. That was an interesting tasting experience. I can safely say it's a unique gin, but is it any good? My answer? No, I think this gin is terrible. I really don't like this gin at all. It does a good job of being fragrant, aromatic, and having the pretty incredible finish on it, but I expected so much more. This should be bursting with flavor, bursting with complexity, and it should have a clarity that is like no other. So, where's the clarity? I don't understand what happened to the clarity. It is muddled. I can't pick anything out of it that I can say, this is definitely this, this is definitely that, this comes from this. No, it just feels like a mess of flavors in my mouth and I can't get my head around it. It's like Ferdinand Tsar has come and taken a shit in my mouth and gone, appreciate that you fuckwit. That's what it feels like. And get this, this is 80 pounds. You will struggle to find this because it is incredibly rare, but then you will pay 80 pounds for the privilege of drinking this. When are you gonna drink it? I don't know. No one's going to be impressed when you bring this out at a dinner party. You're gonna be going, God, each measure of this I pour is about a tenner, and they're not even gonna like it because I don't like it. This is not a gin that you should be drinking at any point in time. I tried to come to this without any preconceptions. I've tried Ferdinand Tsar dry gin before, and I thought it was bang average. I didn't get what the gin was all about. It was so aromatic, but the moment I did any dilution, I lost it. But I thought, this one's gonna be different. This is upscaled. This has even more botanicals. This has more strength to it. This is gonna withstand that dilution. It simply doesn't. By itself, it's unpalatable. With dilution, it vanishes. I don't know what the middle point is. The middle point is surely the ice cube, but it still makes a gin where I'm saying, this doesn't really work. It's just average. I don't get it at all. 80 quid, 80 quid, fuck right off. Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. With 80 quid, get three bottles of gin mare, kick back, get pissed, have a great time. Fuck you, Ferdinand Tsar. Hey, Rapa, let me hear you. Put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Yeah, like and subscribe. Your like and subscribe. Here we go. Do you really like it? Do you really like it? We're liking and subscribing. We're liking and subscribing. Do you really like it? Is it, is it wicked? Yes, it is. You should like and subscribe.